So update your table of contents again. The page that gave you were pages 80 and 81. Evaluating limits out the bracelet. And the purpose that you get will be what page up your page 82. Okay? So, today you guys are going to be able to find limits of polynomial and rational functions algebraically. Uh, a majority of the ones that we did last class were your polynomial expressions, rational functions, et cetera, et cetera. So you guys are going to be able to um, learn how to do those algebraically. It's actually pretty simple. You just have to use some old skills such as factoring, rationalizing, conjugate, et cetera, et cetera, to do as such. Okay? So make sure you guys get the goal down. Substitution method is probably the easiest way to determine a limit. You do exactly what the method says, and that is substitute it in. Okay? Uh, when you go to substitute in the limit as x approaches 4 of x squared minus 6x plus 3, you literally plug in 4. And whatever number you get, that is your limit. Okay? So, that's 4 squared minus 6 times 4. Work on my board because it's being very touchy recently. I don't know why. So, all you do is you just substitute in 4. What's 4 squared? What's 6 times 4? So it's 16 minus 24. Negative 8 plus 3 is? And that's your limit. So the limit as x approaches 4 of this particular function is negative 5. You would get that same number if you were to type it into your calculator, graph it, look at the graph, or look at the table. But that's a lot easier than trying to go through, type it in, try to see, okay, is that negative 5? Or even type in the numbers to determine. Okay? Same thing down here. The limit as x approaches negative 2. So you plug in negative 2. Be careful because you would need to use order of operations here. What would you do first? Square it. I mean, cube it. What's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2? Negative 8 times 4? Negative 32 plus 1. So I have negative 31 on the top. And what's negative 2 minus 5? Negative 7. Negative seven. Two negatives make a? So this is going to be a 31 over 7. That is going to be the limit. That's what it's approaching. Now, if you did that in your calculator, that would definitely be a decimal of some type. Um, but that is the exact answer versus a round one. Same thing down here. The square root of 8 minus x, you plug in 3. What's 8 minus 3? So, again, if you did in your calculator, that would be the decimal equivalent that you would get to the square root of 5. And it's as simple as that. Okay? Yes? How would you end up getting an error like this? You'll see in the next set of examples. Do you examples. want to separate oh, no. decimals? Uh, I prefer to do this fractions. Okay? Is this, is, this a, is this an easy enough concept? You guys don't need any extra practice with this particular method, do you? No. Just plug in. Okay? So I'm going to skip the next set of examples is only if people are having issues. Now, sometimes when, like Michael said, what happens if you get an error? Sometimes when you substitute in um, to certain functions, like a rational function, you may get 0 over 0. Mm -hmm. If the bottom is 0 and, and, and the top is 0, then you need to simplify the function first before you go any further. Now, as long as you get zero on top and zero on the bottom, if you get a number on top and then zero on the bottom, then it doesn't, it is undefined, it does not exist. But if you get zero on the top as well, then you need to simplify. So let's take a look at this. This is negative four, okay? When I go to plug this in, what's negative four squared? 16 minus a negative four turns into a positive four minus 20. That's zero on top and Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Whenever you get this, that means you can simplify this. Simplify in what sense? What do you think I can do to simplify this? X plus 4 and X minus 5. You guys, you're just going to have to work with me, okay? This, this board is acting real. Looks like a real Picasso. Yeah. 
And yes, what you see is that the x plus 4s cancel out. So then you're just left with x minus 5. Now, when you get the simplified form, you go again. You plug in negative 4. What's negative 4 minus 5? Negative 9. And that's your answer. That's your limit. Negative 9. That's a negative 9. For those who are watching the video, this is a negative 9. That's your answer. That's a mess. All right. Now the next one. When you plug in 3, don't you get a 0, zero at the top? And then when you plug all that in, I'm just going to let you know zero. it's 0 at the bottom. I was going to ask that. If the guess. top is, if you do the top because it's a, like, easier to do, and it equals 0, would you start to see if the bottom equals 0 too? Yeah, because if the bottom equals a number, then 0 over a number is just 0. Then that's your limit. So you do got to check both of them. But the top is 0. The bottom is 0. So you have to simplify this again. How can I simplify the bottom? Because that's what we're going to have to simplify. That. Take out an x. That last term doesn't have an x, so I can't take it out. Grouping. You can, um, yeah. Grouping, yes. Factor by grouping. So that means I'm going to group the first two. Group the last two. And then for the first one, you can take out an x. An x squared. squared. So I take out an x squared from the first one and then a negative 7 from the next one. When I take out an x squared from the first set, what, what am I left with? x minus 3 and then x minus 3. So then the bottom actually factors down to be x squared. And x minus 3. So what happens? What happens? Um, the x minus 3s cancel out. The x minus 3 at the top cancels out with the 1 at the bottom. So we have 1 over x squared minus 7. So from here we plug it in again. When I plug in 3, what's 3 squared? Minus 7. So our answer is 1 half. That's exactly what we would get if we did it in our calculator. It would be 1 half. Now who remembers from the rational function unit what, cause, what is happening when you cancel out a factor? It's a whole. It is a whole. So basically when we look at this graph, if we were to look at the graph, we would see a hole at 3, but it's still approaching the same number coming from the left hand side and the right hand side. Okay? How do you guys feel about this? Easy. Easy? Okay. Then now there is a, another one though. <coughs> like, do you guess that you guess that you got it? You need more examples? No. No? Okay. So we're gonna skip these other two. Just remember, if you get zero over zero, try to factor. Try simplifying. Okay. Now, if you get zero over zero and radicals are involved, then you want to rationalize either the numerator or the denominator is simplified, okay? When I plug in nine here, what's the square root of nine? Three. Three, three minus three is? Zero. Zero, and then nine minus nine? Zero. Another zero over zero. Now this one, you have to rationalize. Do you, who, who remembers doing this way back? What do I have to multiply by to rationalize this? The conjugate, which would be what? The square root of x plus 3. So you multiply by the number? No. You always multiply by the conjugate. So if it's, the, the conjugate is always wherever the root is. So that's why I said the numerator or the denominator. But you would change it to a positive? But you would change so it to a positive. So you're plugging the 9? We, well, we already that? plugged the 9 in. But when we plugged in 9, we got 0 over 0. Because oh. we got 0 over 0, we have to rationalize it by multiplying by the conjugate, which is the square root of x so plus 3. Zero, so zero, zero. If the square root was on the bottom, we would times it by x plus 9? If the, the square root of x plus 9? Yeah. If the square root was on the bottom, then we would do the bottom. But because it was at the top, we do the top. Okay? So we just times it by the square root. Exactly. Wherever the square root term is, that's what you multiply by. 
the opposite of it. So, when, so you would just foil? So we have to foil no, the top foil. and the bottom. So I want you guys to go ahead and foil this out because me trying to write out every step, doing it the way I'm doing right now, is going to be a little crazy. So just foil it out right now, the top and the bottom, and then I'll check back in in about like a minute. All right, so when you multiply, square root of x times the square root of x is? Uh, it's minus 9. It's x. Oh, okay. And then the square root of x times 3 is 3 square root of x. Minus, minus 3 square root of x, but those cancel. And so then you're just left with minus nine. a minus 9 at the top. Now at the bottom, when you multiply this, you'll get x root x. That's your first term. And then you'll have plus 3x, then minus 9 root x, and then minus 27 when you FOIL. No, you can't. Mm -mm. Because you have the, that x root x and that negative 9 root x, you wouldn't be able to combine that to be anything. Mm -hmm. So you would just have to plug in 9 in that So you have to plug in 9 from here, okay? Now from here, when you plug in 9, what's the top? Zero. Zero. But then the bottom becomes what? This would be 9 square root of 9. Oops. So it would be 9 times 27. That would be 27? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Oh, Yes, you could. Good. Good stuff. If we keep them separate, then. So then, yes, those will cancel out. So then you'll be left with 1 over the square root of x plus 3. So when you go to plug that in, what do you get now? Um, 1 over 6. And that's your answer. So is that the only way to do it? Multiplying by the conjugate? Yeah. No, I mean uh, crossing the matter of 9 foiling. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you FOIL, you'll get back to 0 over 0, but you could actually factor the bottom, which would be x minus 9 times the square root of x plus 3, which is what you have before you FOIL. Oh, okay. Okay? I want you guys to do both of these. Okay? I want you guys to try both of these. 1 over 6. Uh-huh. Do it on your paper. Find some space. Do it on your paper. So, the first one was 10. It was very similar to the one that you just did. You should have multiplied by the conjugate, which would have been the what? Square root of x plus 5. Square root of x plus 5. So, it was very similar to the other one. This one, though, you had to multiply by what? 2 plus 4. 2 plus the square root of x plus 4. Now, when you do that to the top and to the bottom, when you foil out the top, what do you get? But I thought you plug in first before you do yeah. the rationalize. When I plug in zero, what's zero plus four? Four. four. What's the square root of four? Two. Two. What's two minus two? Two. I mean zero. Zero. And then oh, I would have zero at the bottom. I only got zero. the x. I got only got the um, root sign over the x. So, okay. okay. So uh, I foil. So two times two is four. Two times the square root of x plus four. Two square root of x plus four. When I do the inner term. Minus two over square So what happens to those two terms? Cancel out. Cancel out. But when you multiply the two roots by each other, that's going to be a minus x plus four. An x plus four. Because remember, when you multiply the same root by itself, the root goes away. Just like when you do the square root of three times the square root of three is just three. Same concept, but the issue is, is that that x plus four is in the parentheses because that minus has to get distributed over. When you distribute that minus over, you're going to have four minus x minus four 
And so your numerator is just going to be negative x. Negative x. Your denominator, I'm going to leave it unfactored. Now your x's do cancel out. So what are you left with at the top? Negative 1. Negative one. Over. Over this whole thing. The conjugate part. And so when I go to plug in 0 this time, what's going to be my denominator? It's going to be a negative 4, so it's going to make it a negative 1 fourth. How do y'all get a negative? Yeah. No. Oh, because the top is negative. Sorry, sorry, I didn't include it. I'm sorry. Here we go. If limits approach infinity, okay, so we're done approaching a particular number, now we're approaching infinity. If you if it's approaching infinity and you have a polynomial function, one that's not a fraction, we use n behavior. You guys remember n behavior? Yeah. Yes. The arm stuff. Look at A. Show me with your arms. What does this function look like? Who remembers? It's been a while. Negative. This one is positive. Yes, and it's an odd power. So when it's positive and odd, it looks like this. Okay? So now you ask yourself, okay, well, as x approaches negative infinity, which is going this way, what's happening to your y's? It's going to is going to negative infinity. And that's your answer. So it's just this like is it's, it's literally just like in behavior. It is in okay. behavior. Okay? So huh? negative infinity? It is negative infinity. Because look, if I if I put a XY oh, plane oh. in there. No, and I, saying, like, that's the answer in negative infinity? Yeah, that's your answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Show me what your arms. What's the next one? Oh, uh, oh y'all. Yeah. I almost remember. Okay. It's upside down parabola. <laughs> and the reason why is because, yes, it's a negative x squared. As it approaches positive infinity, as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. Negative infinity. Awesome. Show me which arms. What's the last one? Positive and even. It's good. Yes, it is good. So, what's the answer? Infinity. Every what does it look like if it's an odd power? If it's an odd negative? Uh, yeah, it's like this. Looks like that. Okay. Odd negative. So it was like a negative oh, x to the third. Okay. So um uh, so it's based on odd and even, right? So like odd and uh, even and then if it's positive or negative. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's easy. Yep. So it, just use M behavior, an old concept. We don't need no practice, right? No. Well, how about this? Show me what your arms. What does the first one look like? Which arms? What's the first one look like? Uh, oh. pretend, 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 like I, pretend like we're facing the same way. Very good. The next one. The second one. No, wait. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the first one. The second one. Very good. And the last one. Careful. Oh, like the last one. Next. Careful. Like oh, what the heck am I doing? It is, yes. This one looked like this. This one looked like this. And this one looked like that. I like an M. Okay? So don't forget your M behavior. Now, if it's a rational function, though, and we're dealing with infinity, then what you have to look at is your horizontal asymptotes. These, both of these are old concepts from first semester, but they're coming back here, okay? This is when we deal with rational functions. Remember, we had to look at the degree. Okay, you guys don't have to write down every single word. Shorthand it as much as you can. But if the numerator is less than the denominator, we're looking at the degree, the horizontal asymptote was equal to zero, which would be your limit. Okay? Oh, these aren't there. Yeah, these aren't there. You got to write them in. This is just to refresh your memory from rational functions. If the degrees are equal, then it was the coefficients. If the numerator is greater than the denominator, there is no horizontal asymptote, but then this is when you do case three. Okay? So I'll give you guys a second to write that down. So again, with these types of problems, with the rational functions, you look at the exponent of your numerator, the exponent of your denominator. If the numerator is less than your denominator, your limit is going to be zero. 
Simple as that. If they're equal, it's the coefficients of the largest exponents. If the numerator is bigger than the denominator, there was no horizontal asymptote, but this is when we do case three. Because case three is basically involving like your slant asymptotes. You guys remember doing slant asymptotes? Maybe very vaguely. Those are the kind that, you know, you had like a, a diagonal and then it looked like this and like this. Okay, look at those ends just off of that graph I drew. Where are they pointing to? If you go to infinity, where are they pointing to? The ends. Positive, positive, positive. positive infinity or negative. negative so those are going to be your either of your two your answers depending on um, if the numerator is bigger than the denominator. It's either going to be positive infinity or negative infinity. You just, just have to shot. determine. Now the algebraic way to do it is to divide every term by the highest power. But really, all you have to do is you just have to look at the largest exponents coefficient. Okay, that's all you really have to look at. Because if it's positive, if they're both positive, it's positive. If one's negative, then it's negative. And you'll see what I mean by looking at these examples here. Okay, let's look at the first one. It's a rational function. Are the degrees equal or is one bigger? Equal. So all we do is we look at the... Well, they're the same, so that means we look at the... Coefficient. Coefficient. It'll be 4 over 8, which is... Yeah. One over two. That's our limit. Look at B. It's approaching. It doesn't matter if it's approaching negative infinity or positive infinity. It doesn't matter. Okay? We still look at the degree. In this one, we see that the... Denominator is greater. Denominator is greater. Denominator is greater. When that happens, it's going to be... Zero. Zero. So far, so good. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay? Now, in this one, it's the opposite, okay? But take a look. Look at the coefficient of the numerator and of the denominator. They are both positive. Because they're both positive, that means that if we were to try to graph this as x is approaching infinity, y would be approaching infinity as well. Okay? Okay. So if it's negative. So even if it's. Wait, hold on. Let me get Luke first. What? Wait, so if, if they're positive, that means they're both approaching infinity always? Uh huh. And if they're negative, it's negative infinity? If one of them is negative. Oh, okay. Now, if they both were negative, a negative divided by negative positive. is a positive. Exactly. Now, algebraically, let me just show you. That, that third case was saying that you would divide every single term by the largest exponent. Okay? If I divide. 5x to the 4th by 5x to the 4th. What do you get? Try again. Divide 5x. Like, divide this. What do you get? Say again. You get 5. Okay? Now, if you did to the denominator, right, you would get, um, Going to be x to the fourth? Huh? You do it. You do it each. Uh, you do them each individually. So you do it to so the I'm numerator. Saying, what is nine x? You do it. I say you do it based off of the largest exponent, top oh. and bottom. Okay. Here you see your x to the threes would cancel out, right? Mm -hmm. So then you would have nine plus what? If you simplified this, what would you get? What would you get if you simplified this? Two over, over x. x squared. Very good. Now, this is the algebraic way, okay? I showed you guys the shortcut way. It's the easiest way to do it, but this is the algebraic way. If you plug in infinity, a super, super big number into x, what happens to this term right here? If I plug in a super, super big number for x, what's going to happen to this term right here? It's going to get really, really small. Getting closer to what number? Zero. So basically, the bigger the number you put in here, this whole term is going to go away. And you're just going to be left with the 9 at the bottom. 5 over 9, that's a positive number. That's what you're going to end up approaching. Okay? All right? That's the algebraic way to do it. Huh? 
Like so, if you had more terms, you'd have to do it too. To every single. So that's like being more specific. Okay. That's like being more specific. That that's that's why that's why but the short code way works. Affinity or negative affinity would be okay. Yeah, okay. and I mean, and this this is what I'm showing you. I showed you guys the shortcut way because pretty much that's all you're you're looking at. But this is the algebraic way to do. As it. in both positive, or are you talking about like like five the, and nine being both positive? Yeah, the coefficients of the largest um, exponent. Yeah, the largest degree. Okay. I want you guys to do, I want you to look at these. You don't necessarily have to write them down, but I want you guys to try to do these real quick, okay? All right, so you're trying to determine the limit as x approaches to the negative infinity or positive infinity. It doesn't matter. It's infinity. What's the answer for the first one? Zero. 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 Very good. The second one? None. None. It approaches something. Negative infinity. Negative infinity. Very good. And the last one? 7 over 2. I tried to do the denominator. There is no horizontal asymptote, which means it's slant, which means you're dealing with the infinity or negative infinity case. This is like case 3. The second one's case 3. Okay? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, that's dealing with infinity. The last ones that we're going to talk about, I want you guys to write this out. Write this down at the bottom. Piecewise. Yeah, piecewise functions. Yeah. These are actually easy. easy as well. It's it's similar to substitution method. Um, you just have to make sure you're substituting it into the right piece. Okay? So you're writing this down in your open space. And we're gonna talk about this, uh, the piecewise functions one. You think back to unit one when you guys were evaluating functions to a, a specific number with your piecewise functions, remember you had to identify, okay, what piece did it belong to? Like what part of the piecewise function did it belong to? And then you plugged it. Okay? That's what we did. It's the same concept here. Okay? When you're doing it algebraically. Alright? So let's just say the problem was the limit as x approached Two. Okay? You have to look at it from the left side and the right side. So you go to the bounds. Remember, we went to the bounds. And then we said, okay, well, where is two? Two is split in between the first piece and the second piece of the function. Is it not? So what you're going to do is you're going to plug it into both pieces of the function. Okay? When I plug in two into the first piece, what's two plus one? Three. So that would be the limit as it's coming from the left hand side. Because x minus 2, that's everything to the left of 2. So coming from the left, the limit would be 3. Coming from the right, you would be plugging it into the second piece, okay? Because 2 is less then x less than 4, that's the part that's to the right of 2. When I plug in 2 into the second one, what do you get? Uh, two. You get 2. Are those numbers the same? No. So the limit as x approaches 2 is going to be what? D and E. Because those have to be the same. So you're going to have to so you have wait one at a time. I'm sorry. Either or. Who's going to be? Uh, I was going to ask you if they give you two they give you a bunch of limits for each one. It's going to have different answers for each one. You've got different answers for each one, yes. But it's all going to be based off of one of these three, or however many pieces are in your piecewise function. Okay? Now, if they gave you what's the limit as x approaches three, well, three lies in between two and four. So you only have to plug it into the one, and then that's just going to be the answer. But if it's split, between two of the pieces of the piecewise function, then you have to plug into both, and it has to be the same number to exist. Yes? I have a question. Since, like, the two is split, mm -hmm. since the four is equalized to the third piece, you only have to plug into that number. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it was the limit as x approached four, you still would have to evaluate it, because it's saying four from the left and four from the right. Okay? Okay, so even though it's equal to two as well on the third piece, you have to plug it into both. Even though it's equal to, you have to plug it into both. Okay? Let's do this one. If I plug in four, 
to the to the second piece. What do I get? Uh, Fourteen. If I plug it into the third piece, what did you get? Three. What is the limit as x approaches four? Does not exist. Does not exist because it's not the same coming from the left hand side nor the right hand side. How do you know which one it is? Uh, well, I, I just made these up based off of this problem, but it will be given to you like on your homework. It will give you a bunch of limits. And I'll tell you which one to use? No, it won't tell you which one to use. You have to know which part of the piece to use based off of this right here. So you use that. That will be given to you. And then you have to look over here at this area. And since that one has four, you need Since this has four and this one has four, this is from the left-hand side. This one was from the right-hand side, so you have to plug in the both. Because in order for a limit to exist, it has to approach the same number from the left and from the right. 